y'all. I'm Elisa, the scrappy wife behind scrappywife.com. And today I have a craft room organization video for you. We talk a lot in the crafting world about having supplies at hand, like at arm's length so that you can reach the supplies that you are looking for. And there is a lot of talk about being able to see supplies versus having them behind doors or in cabinets or bins and things like that. And I want to share with you my theory on how to decide what supplies you should be able to see and what supplies you should hide. So let's go. As you can tell, my craft room is a place where I have as many supplies out as I can. At least that's what it looks like because I am inspired by color. I am a visual learner. I'm inspired by visual cues. So truthfully, just walking past my craft room with the door open generally gives me a little pick me up. I like seeing the beautiful papers. I like seeing the beautiful craft supplies. And so having them out in visual is really important to my creative process. That being said, there are some things that I choose to put behind closed doors, you might say, maybe in drawers, maybe in bins that you don't always see. And I just wanted to explain how I decide what goes where. In the world of home organization, you hear the term backstock a lot. And what backstock is would be extra supplies or supplies that you are going to need but that you might be stocking up on or that you might need just for a specific reason and this card catalog is one of my examples of where i keep my back stock okay let's talk back stock so i was a felicity jane subscriber for about a year and a half i just recently stopped the subscription because i have so many supplies but i have a lot of my supplies in back stock so these are beautiful supplies. Are they ones that I reach for for a typical project? No. This is chipboard, some paper embellishments, and some 3D embellishments. Most of the things I do are flat. I'm a paper crafter and I don't like a lot of dimension, but these are high quality products. Have I used them before? Yes. And so I keep them in back stock. I know they're here, but they are not things I need to see. These are things that I'm going to be seeking out if I need them. And so I don't need to have them in a visual place. Do I want to keep them? Yes. They're not warranting a D stash yet because I still like the supplies. There's still definitely some projects that I could do that will involve these supplies, but do I need to see them? No. I feel the same way about all the Felicity Jane pocket cards. I do use them from time to time, but I don't need to have them out in visual in order to be inspired to grab them. The same can be said for some of my themed ephemera. So I have fall and winter themed ephemera in here. Um, and that also includes some journaling cards specifically from the paper person. These are pieces that I'm not grabbing for year round because they have a heavy theme to them. So I put them in my back stock, I hide them away, I pull them out and they are more visual in that particular time of year. Same thing goes for vintage. So I have several pieces of vintage ephemera, vintage pieces that I use from time to time. That's not my normal go-to theme or inspiration though. I tend to be a bit more colorful. So I keep my vintage ephemera in back stock when I know I'm doing a project that calls for vintage or I'm in a vintage mood, then I can pull it out and have it uh, front and center. But having it behind the closed storage helps my room from being overly visually cluttered. I know some of you might be thinking your room has a lot going on and it does, but I don't need everything out in visual. I have a lot that's out, but I definitely don't need everything. Let's talk about how I hide some more things away. These are two large bins that I actually just recently purchased from Target. Let me pull them down and show you the types of things that I keep there where they're up high. I don't need them all the time. And because they're in those pretty solid bins, I cannot see what's in them very readily. All right, bin number one includes a lot of photo props. So I use things in here to help me set up photos for Instagram 
and YouTube. I don't need to see these all the time. I pull them down when needed, but you can see there's a lot going on in here. If I had this out on display in my room all the time, it would distract from the actual supplies that I'm wanting to work with. And then this particular one is kind of my overflow storage pieces. There's a lot of boxes in here, a lot of smaller bins that I use at different times during the year. For instance, when I'm pulling out certain ephemera categories that I may be reaching for at that time, or if I'm gathering supplies for a specific project, these are really good quality boxes and bins that I use, but I don't need to have them out in visual all the time. I will pull them out when I need them. While this particular bookshelf might look a little bit overwhelming, there are some things that are in what I would call back stock, meaning that they're not visually apparent. So for instance, I have all of these office supplies. However, instead of leaving those bins clear, I covered them with vinyl so that it was a little bit more visually simple because you have just the purple vinyl there. Right here is my extra traveler's notebook. So I have a lot of traveler's notebooks. That is a frequent project of mine. And these are the ones that I haven't started yet. I don't need to see them all lined up when I'm ready to pick out a new traveler's notebook or a new notebook of some sort. I can go in there and find what I'm looking for. Um, the difference would be if I had them all lined up on this bookshelf, A, it would take up a lot more room than I was ready to give up on that bookshelf, but keeping them in that vintage wire basket keeps them all organized, organized, allows me to see what I have when I pull it down, but I don't need access to it at all times. This would be the other area of my room. Even though these are clear bins, they are put away. I don't get into them all of the time. There's some extra categories, some overflow devotional kits. You can see By the Well for God and Creative Retreat up top, Illustrative Faith. Those are extra kits or kits that I haven't gotten to yet. So those are kind of overflow. I don't need to have them all out and lined up. That would be overwhelming for me. So they're in there. I can find them when I need them. Same goes for Cricut materials. So I am a relatively new Cricut user. I've had it for about a year. I'm learning but there are so many different Cricut materials and accessories, it can quickly become overwhelming. So instead of trying to find a place for all of them, all of my extras, all the new things that I am trying, I can keep in there. Now I do have a large ladder full of vinyl, but that's a material I use all the time. So yes, it deserved a visual spot in my room but I didn't need a visual spot for leather or a visual spot for engraving materials because those are things that I don't use that often. So I put them behind um, a, what I call closed door, closed container. I know it's clear, but it's still kind of tucked away. Let's talk for a minute about things that I like to have out. So I've showed you some of the things I like to have away. These are things that I like to have out. My pens and markers, are a big inspiration for me in that I love all the color, I love all the different kinds, and I use them frequently in my journaling. So I have them out so that I don't have to dig for what I'm looking for. I have them out in really beautiful kind of pottery ceramic pieces, and then I have this spinner from Michaels that I am loving. I used to have more of my markers stowed away, but I am really enjoying the fact that I can reach for some now. And because they're out, I've been using them more, especially these Arteza paint pens. I've been using a lot more. And these thin liners from Arteza, I was not using at all because they were stored away. Now that they are out, I will grab for them because I can see them. But they're already conducive to the type of crafting that I like to do. Inks are another example of something that I wanted out. And what I really like about this particular storage option is that I can see them all at once. If I had my inks in drawers, even if they were lined up, it could be hard for me to see them all at once. I love that I can just spin in my chair, look over and see all of the different colors that I have available. It really makes it easy for me to pick out what I'm looking for, to mix and match the different colors. So I really, really enjoy that. 
Something else I like having out would be all of my acrylic paints. These are the paints that I use most frequently when I am art journaling, so I love having them out in visual. Um, again, this is a visually impactful element in my craft room, and yes, it serves a lot of purposes in that it holds a lot of art supplies. This pegboard is huge. It's about four feet by four feet-ish, um, but it also is just so inspiring to see that it's hard to walk into this craft room and not feel a little pick-me-up from all of the color that is on the pegboard. Even your typical craft cart kind of has zones that are more visual than others. Yes, this is all kind of open storage, but on the top is where I'm going to keep my things that I grab for most often. So these are some extra sticker books and filler paper that I use frequently. So it's on the top. As you work your way down, I'm less likely to be grabbing for these. And then at the bottom, these are planner covers. So I only look at these maybe once a month when I'm switching out my planners. So I organize it in a way where the things I use most are visual and accessible. And the things I use less often are stored away. I can still get to them, but I don't need the access and I don't need to see them the second I walk into my craft I am room. in the midst of setting up this new cart, my newest addition to the craft room that I got from Amazon. It's a really tall, skinny cart. And in the same way, at the top and the second shelf, I have ephemera organized by color. So color is very visual for me and very inspiring. So that's why I organized it by color. Having it out and having it in these removable bins allows me to easily access it. As you work your way down, these are things I don't need access to as much. Some extra planner supplies and then some really specific planner supplies, a whole Disney line and some micro notes that I don't use very often. Do I still want to have those supplies here? Yes, but I don't need to see them. When I'm looking for Disney, I'm gonna go find Disney and pull it out if I'm planning a specific spread or for a trip or something like that, but it doesn't need to be out all of the time. So yes, while you want access to your craft supplies and the more supplies you can see, the better because when you see it, you will use it. You want to consider as you're setting up your craft space, your office, any of those spaces, what do you need at the forefront and what can be put into back stock or can be organized in a place or in a way that's not as visually cluttering. Um, I am, you know, certainly someone that's inspired by the visual. I have a lot going on in my craft room and I love it because that works for my personality. You need to decide what works for your personality. I like open bins. I like easy access, but I am going to store away the things that I'm not using as often. Um, I will eventually de-stash if I find myself really, really not using it. And some way, sometimes that's a good way to kind of start the de-stashing process is to put some of your supplies in like a holding bin and see, do I actually go into that bin? Am I reaching for it? Give it a certain amount of time and say, hey, if it's been six months and I haven't reached for that thing, then it's out of here. Working with the placement of your supplies is a big deal. It's not just about having them all organized in one place. It's about having it organized in a way that works with the way your creative flow works. I hope this video inspired you to kind of take a look at how you have placed things in your craft room and maybe consider taking a few things out of your typical rotation putting them away in a place that you don't necessarily need to see visually all the time. And hopefully that gives you a little bit more breathing room, a little bit more creative space. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. Um, make sure to check out links below. If you saw something that um, I don't link, make sure to ask me and I will add that in. Also check out, I have a couple of different courses up on my Scrappy University. So I have a link to that below as well. A huge shout out to my YouTube members. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for all of your support. If you're interested in checking out some of the exclusive content that my YouTube members are receiving, then make sure to clink, click the join button below. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.